Will she see me? Be quiet. But is she here? At least tell me that. I can't speak to you. You're defiled. Seven times. And be clean. The Syrians have gone out by companies. I know how that story begins. You see, I used to know it all by heart. You learnt it in the wrong place from the wrong people. My father used to read the Bible aloud every Sunday evening. Are not Abana and Farpa, rivers of Damascus, better than all the waters of Israel? Six. Seven. Give me your hands now. I, I've got to see her. You can tell me anything you want to say to her. She's the only one who can forgive me. I have the authority to do that. From her. What have you done about your wife? I promise you, I... You're lying. I was guilty when you came here begging me to get you in. No, it's got nothing to do with my wife. If you've been brought up as I was, my father, he expected me to live up to his principles. It is easier for a camel to go through the eye of a... lying to yourself. It isn't the money that's defiled you. I don't feel it's wrong living with my wife. I can't be a monk. You don't have to. I live alone. Get rid of your wife. Better leave now. Get rid of your wife, or she'll never speak to you. She'll never forgive you. Get rid of your wife. You know, I wouldn't mind taking this up. It feels sort of alive. It's supposed to, but you've got to control it. So it becomes like part of your own arm. Not something separate. Teach me and we're going on a safari for our honeymoon. Seems strange not carrying a gun over here. In the Kenya police, I used to sleep with my rifle. Oh, well, you can have a rifle of your very own, Mac, as soon as we find a flat. But you're not sleeping with it then. You know, I was working on a new design this morning. All I could draw was double beds. What about that flat you're going to see today? Oh, another racket. House agent. Hosea Pitt. Do you know they want 12 quid a week for it? 12 quid? Yes. How many rooms? Oh, two. But one of them's got a carpet in it, so they call it furnished. Do you want another go? No, I'd sooner watch you. That roommate of yours would only move out. Well, it's her flat. Don't think you want to live there when we're married, anyway. Memories? Mistakes. Sheila's going to be out tonight. I'm on duty at ten. Here, how did I do? You hit it. Once. I'm good at some things, though, aren't I? With you, I am. What time is Sheila going out? She might be gone now. If I don't take you to dinner, you won't eat. Who wants to eat? I do. If you like Chinese food. But that's all we've got time for. What I really feel like. An unexamined life is a wasted life. That's what she says. Do you believe in it? Believe in her, I mean. I'm one of her closest helpers. I don't understand that he's always been so happy. I I've never denied him anything. Well, nobody forced him to go to her, did they? Well, it's the way he was brought up. You see, he felt it was wrong making all that money. Oh, stop lying to yourself. That's her first rule. It wasn't the money. It was what he bought with it. You. But that, that's not true. I liked him. That's a lie to a man of his age. Well, look at you. It's not surprising he felt guilty. He knew he was leading a false, depraved life. Depraved! You know what that means, all right, don't you? You get some odd ones here. We're all odd, except you and me. And I'm not too sure about you. That's the way I was brought up. 
You're leading a depraved life. And you know what that means, don't you? Well, if I don't, I can always ask a policeman. Hello. <laughs> dun, 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 dun. James Hunter has a CID. Yeah, they all like you. Who? Policemen. Oh, they're all different. Some of the boys in the squad room, you, if you met them, you'd think they were bank clerks. <laughs> and there's an old boy upstairs who looks like Mr. Gladstone. Oh, the man who invented the band. Mm. He stopped me the other day. I understand you're from Kenya, Sergeant. Must find it rather tame here. Pompous old boar. Oh, well, perhaps I'll just keep him around to impress the American tourists. He's a chief inspector, and he likes you to know it. It's possible you already know who I am. Chief Inspector Rose. <laughs> Rose. <laughs> You've got a price tag all over you, and a pretty cheap one, too. Well, any man in his income bracket. I'm not that sort. Shall I tell you what sort you are? But a dyed blonde who isn't going to keep her looks for much longer. You haven't got much brain, but you did have the sense to realize that you were 25, going on for 30, working in a second-rate hairdressing salon, and you were getting frightened. Then you met him. You didn't like him at all at first, but he had a car, and he took you to restaurants instead of coffee bars like your other dates. He gave you the creeps when he touched you, but he was too prudish and, and fumbling to tell you what he wanted, really. But it wasn't too hard to make him keep his hands off you. It wasn't like that. It wasn't. You thought it was a scream when he told you he wanted to marry you. But then you thought, why not? You weren't likely to get any cushier offers. And it was better than living in a bed sitter with a gas ring. So, you married him. And it hasn't been too bad on the whole, having your hair done where you used to work and showing off your new clothes. Well, you don't like to look at him when he's getting undressed. But he isn't going to live forever. And there's always the business and insurance. Shut up! You don't like hearing the truth, do you? Why can't you leave us alone? It's got nothing to do with me. Hasn't it? Do you think I want him? He couldn't stand it any longer, the whole rotten lie. That's all your marriage ever was. What? So he went to her, and in her charity, she listened to him. She made him look into his heart and face the truth about himself. And now he's seen the truth. He's going to leave you, Mrs. Hosea Pitt. He's going to leave you flat. No, I've got to go. Now? I'm on duty, damn it. Oh, couldn't you be late for once? Pritchard can't go home till I relieve him. Who cares about Pritchard? I do. Well, it's his turn to relieve me. Mm -hmm. See you tomorrow. Mm. Sheila will be back then, though. We'll have a flat of our own soon. Mm. I'm seeing another one tomorrow. Oh, dear God, don't let it be another racket. Let it be a nice, warm place that we can afford. Good evening, Sergeant Hunter. Good evening, Sergeant Richard. Mm -hmm. Anything special? quiet so far. Uh, I don't know what's the matter with them all. No ambition, that's the trouble with criminals these days. Hmm? And it can't be too quiet for me. Uh, I should go around the bend if I have to sit here all night. You know, Sergeant Hunter, you ought to study something. The uh, hundred most important books have been a great comfort to me. That's right. Go on home, for God's sake, you old creep. We put them out in 18 condensed volumes. They only cost a few bob a week. Well, you're getting married soon, aren't you? And your wife can read them as yeah. well. My wife's already on volume 12. I don't know what we shall do when we finish them. Oh, I, I dare say you'll think of something, son, Pritchard. Well, uh, shall I get you an order form for the set? Well, I don't know. I, 
Don't think my girl's the kind, really, to sit home nights with a book. You know, you might as well take poison. Well, we're all hooked on something. Yes, don't I know it. <coughs> Go and lie down. I'll heat your hot water bottle for you. Oh, you're going to make someone a hell of a wife. Well, not you, thank heaven. Well, I hope you know what you're doing, marrying a copper. It's a dog's life. He'll, he'll be out half the night. Then I'll sleep days with him. Disgusting. You're going to give up your job, are you, and live on a sergeant's pay? I've had enough kicks and crops and lame dogs in my life. Oh, like me. No, not like you. I used to fall in love with them. And you just mother me. And I don't. I daughter you. <laughs> oh, my father image, love. You're not very good at that, either. Now, look, I am not an alcoholic. And my father would never admit he was. I drink because my liver's all shot and it hurts. And your liver's all shot because you drink. Well, you wouldn't give me a glass of whiskey if I was dying. We're all dying. Yeah, some of us are dying faster than others. <coughs> Who's this? Yeah, let's see. No, oh, that's she. <laughs> yeah, she, that, that's what they call her. Her. She. Yeah, you know, the way they used to talk about Queen Victoria. She, she is not amused. She can only spare the press five minutes, Mr. Blaine. <laughs> She's a fake. Yeah. Well, how? Oh, it's one of those sects, the um, chosen persons. Uh, only nine-tenths of the important persons are women. And she's the big cheese. <laughs> chosen McDavid, she calls herself. Well, what do they believe in? Ruth, stop lying to yourself. That's her first rule. An unexamined life is a wasted life. Oh, sounds pretty sensible to me. You're writing a piece about her? Mm -hmm. Well, about the chosen person. Mm. Ah, the whole thing is just another racket. <coughs> Come on, Fred. Don't you believe in anything, love? Mm -hmm. hmm. Yes, I believe in going to Connemara. What? Connemara. Yeah, it, it's an old Irish story, I think. You see, the, the, there was this man, and he was packing his bags, and they, they asked him where he was going, and he said, uh, I'm going to Connemara. And they said, uh, you, you are going to Connemara, God willing. And he said, I am going to Connemara. And so to punish him, God turned him into a frog and put him in a very nasty, slimy frog pond for seven years. And the day he came out, he was packing his bags again. And they said to him, where, where are you going? And he said, I, I'm going to Connemara. And they said, you, <coughs> you are going to Connemara, God willing. And he said, look, I am going to Connemara, or else I'm going back into that bloody frog pond. <coughs> There's damn few of us will ever get to Connemara, love. I, I, I didn't. I, I swear I, I didn't. I, I didn't do it. I didn't. Give me the address. Hmm? Off the Earl's Court Row. Yes, I know where it is. She is dead, Sergeant. Was the door open? No, I forced it. It's the woman from the restaurant. Oh, you know her. Right, you can go back to the car now. I'll take charge here. On the contrary, Sergeant Hunter, I shall take charge here. I believe you know who I am. Chief Inspector Rose.
Did you sleep well? You were late, I heard you come in. Swallowed your tongue? Huh? I said, have you swallowed your tongue, dear? No. Aren't you going to kiss me? I suppose it would defile you if you kissed your own wife good morning. Fleur, please. Are you sure you're allowed to eat with me? Perhaps she's forbidden you to do that as well. What do you mean? Well, what would people say if they came here and saw all your things in the spare room? Thought you'd sooner be alone. That's a lie. Stop lying to yourself. That's one of her rules, isn't it? Why don't you practice what she preaches? I try. You won't find it so easy to get rid of me. That's what she's told you to do, isn't it? What? I saw that other one, that Ruth Marl. When? Last night. Oh, it was charming, I can tell you. She said you were going to leave me. She said you were going to leave me flat. I, I can't. I, I told her I can't. What's the matter, Rosie? What's the matter, dear? It was all right till you got mixed up with her. It was all right, wasn't it? I didn't mind you being older or, you know, quiet like you are. It, it's got nothing to do with you. I kept telling her that. You, you've been good for me, Fleur. You, you're not the reason well, I... what then? Oh, I... I don't know. I feel frightened all the time. That's what it is, frightened. Well, what are you frightened about? Well, it's the money. But sometimes I think it's just the money. What is that to be frightened about? You make it honestly. Honestly? What does that mean these days? For when my father started the firm, but he had principles. Pitt and company aren't interested in that sort of business. I can hear him saying it. But now... Poor oh, people cut corn as everybody does. You'd go under if you didn't. You work too hard. We could manage on less money, you know. You can't stand still in business these days. Do you know what that means? It means grow, expand, make more money. But, but, but what's right or wrong? Nobody even cares. But you shouldn't worry about it. When I went to her, she knew what was right. I told her everything, and, and she said I was forgiven. And for about a week, I wasn't frightened. Not, not frightened any longer. Can you imagine what that felt like? Can, can you understand the, the relief? And then she, she started on about you, about leaving you, and... I, well, I told her I couldn't. I couldn't. That's all right, Hosey. That's all right, dear. It's all this worrying about it that's upset you. All this silly worrying about what's right and wrong. Hmm. Uh, I'd better go. They've been waiting to get into the office. They can't get in till I open up. Where's your stick, dear? Oh, I don't know. I must have left it somewhere. Oh, that's not like you. Perhaps you've left it at the office. No, I think I left it on a bus. On a bus? You took the car yesterday. Well, I'll get another one this morning. Um, kiss me before you go. I'll, uh, move your things back into my room, shall I? <laughs> the police are anxious to interview a man who was seen entering the building late last night. He's described as about 50 years old, wearing a dark coat and hat and carrying a walking stick. So? Do you remember the two women that were sitting nearest in the restaurant last night? The one who was doing the talking? Oh, telling the blonde the awful truth about herself, that one. That's the one that got murdered. Wow. I didn't recognize her. Still, I'm not surprised. Sorry. You can't think of anything she said. I don't I... think the blonde killed her. No, I think it could have been that man with the stick. She was beaten to death. Oh. I suppose you're used to it. Can you think of anything she said? Yes, yes, one thing. An un unexamined life is a wasted life. What about it? Uh, nothing, probably. It's one of the rules. What rules? Well, it's a sect called the Chosen Persons. How did you know that? Someone was talking about it. No. 
Well, I've got to go. Where'd you get to last night? Nowhere. I rang you about one o'clock. Oh, someone in the next flat asked me in. Oh. Well, aren't you going to kiss me before you go? When you're a policeman, you're nothing else, are you? I'm sorry, but it's a messy case and I've got to work on it with that fat old idiot upstairs. What fat old idiot? Rose. You picked up the spoor, Sergeant? The spoor, Sergeant. The trace, the scent of the killer. I understood it was a word much used in our colonies. Kenya isn't a colony. You must forgive me, I find it so difficult to keep track of the members of our dwindling empire. Anyway, I'm English. I've lived in England for eight years now. My congratulations to you. You have something to report, Sergeant? That Ruth Marl that was murdered last night, I think she may have been involved with an organization in South London. It's a sort of sect. The chosen person. Yes. And what have you found out about them, Sergeant? Perhaps you'd care to enlighten me. The head of the sect is a woman. Her real name is Shirley Grott, but she prefers to be known as Chosen MacDavid, understandably enough. Shirley Grott is hardly the name to inspire devotion. I think it might be instructive if we had a chat with Miss MacDavid. Right, sir, I'll go and see her at once. One moment, Sergeant. I said we. Miss McDavid? Today, Madam, we're police officers. I'm Chief Inspector Rose, and this is Sergeant Hunter. It's very good of you to receive us, Madam. Uh, perhaps you read the morning's papers, the distressing news about Miss Ruth Marl. She was, we understand, one of your helpers. You are unclean. I beg your pardon. You are defiled. Your life is a web of lies, depraved. Madam. She cannot speak to you until you have cleansed yourself. Very well. Uh, please proceed. Seven times. Wash in Jordan seven times, Sergeant, and be clean. I'm afraid Sergeant Hunter echoes the sentiments of Naam and the leper. Are not Abana and Farpa, the rivers of Damascus, better than all the waters of Israel? Four. Five. Since this is a purely symbolic ritual, I assume it will be sufficient if my sergeant performs it for both of us. Sir. Excellent sergeant, I trust that you are now a better and a cleaner man, likened unto a little child, as they put it in the Book of Kings. You've come about Ruth Marl's death. We have found evidence which indicates that she was a member of your sect. An ex-member. She'd resigned. I expelled her. May I ask why? Yes, of course. Ruth Marl had been with me for some time. I had great trust in her. She was one of my closest helpers. But unfortunately, my trust was misplaced. In what way? All contributions to the sect are strictly voluntary. 
And I discovered that you've been trying to extract money from one of our members by what was almost a form of blackmail. By working on his sense of guilt and promising him forgiveness in return for cash. How long ago did you find this out? Not until yesterday, I'm afraid. You had it out with us? Well, of course, at once. The first rule of our sect is absolute truth. Complete frankness with oneself and with others. The man concerned came here suddenly, unexpectedly, yesterday, yesterday evening at about six o'clock. And after he left, she reported to me. When you've learned to live with the truth, you develop a great scent for lies. I realized at once that Ruth was hiding something about this man. And so after he left, I questioned her. And finally, she confessed to me. I had no choice but to expel her from the sect. Would you mind telling us the man's name? His name is Jose L. Pitt. Oh, I'm sorry, that may be one of my men, Sergeant. Well, thank you for your cooperation, Miss McDavid. Until we learn through truth to control ourselves, law and the police are a necessary evil. Exactly. Jose L. Pitt. What can you tell me about him, Miss McDavid? I've got an appointment with her. Would you wait a moment, please? Do you want to speak to Miss McDavid? Are you one of our nuts? I'm a police sergeant. That wasn't what I asked you. Who are you? Fred Blaine. Press, as they say. Well, what are you doing here? Is she assisting you in your inquiries into the murder? I asked you a question. Yeah, and I'm too old and too tired to answer it. Now, look, son, you cooperate with me, and I'll spell your name right. Fair enough? Yeah, oh, by the way, uh, have you found the man with the walking stick yet? So what's the connection with this place? I've been here before. I've seen Ruth Marl here. This girl. And I remember her face. Does that answer your question? Mr. Blaine? Yes. Blaine. He's a reporter, sir. What a pity. I thought it might be Hosea Pitt who saved us the trouble of having to call on him. Hosea Pitt? I've heard that name before, sir. You've seen it before, Sergeant, on notice boards. Hosea Pitt is an estate agent. I've uh, brought that piece about you in case you want to sue us. You know, this murder's going to change things a little now. My editor wants to tie it in with the Sunday feature story. All right, go and get the waters of Jordan, and let's go through that Mickey Mouse again. And then perhaps you'll tell me who killed your girlfriend. He, he didn't go out last night. What time did he get back from the office? Oh, about seven, and then he stayed here for the rest of the evening. Did you stay with him, Mrs. Pitt? Of course. No, you didn't. I've seen Mrs. Pitt before, sir. You had dinner with Ruth Marr last night at the Paper Dragon in Earl's Court. I didn't. I was at the next table. Oh. All right, then I did. But Hosey was here when I got back. Were you a friend of Miss Marr? <laughs> Not me. I only met her that once. She wanted to talk to me, and I... I told her to meet me at the Paper Dragon. Why did you want to talk to her? I wanted to find out what they were like. They? Chosen persons, that whole rotten sect, as they call themselves. You knew that your husband was interested in the sect. Oh, she took advantage of him. He's, he's a bit soft like that, you know, always worrying about what's right and wrong. Miss Marl was trying to extort money from him, wasn't she? Shouldn't be surprised. Shouldn't be surprised if they all were. Her, too, that chosen McDavid. If you ask me, that's all those fakes are after, really. You must have been most anxious to protect him from them. It's his money. Do what he likes with it, as long as it makes him happy. It was Ruth Marl you were trying to protect him from, wasn't it? She was after him for herself. She was trying to get your husband to leave you. No. She didn't mind telling you what she thought of you, either. How easy it would be to take him from you. No. She could never have taken me away from you. Nobody could. I don't know why I went there, really, to the, the flat. Uh, I wasn't after her. Uh, not the way you think. I'm not that sort of man. Ask my wife. Uh, no, it was the, the thinking. Trying to understand why I, why I felt so worried all the time. I wanted to see her, Miss McDavid. She was the only one who knew, really knew. But Ruth said she wouldn't see me unless I left Fleur. I wanted to talk to someone. That's why I went to Ruth Marr's flat. I, I didn't mean to do it. But the thing she was saying about my wife, I did it. I cured her.
Evening, Sergeant Hunter. Evening, Sergeant Richard. It's a nasty murder you had last night. Someone's confessed, thank God. Another day with all Rose upstairs, I'd have confessed to it myself. Have you got a statement yet? The great I am up there is handling that. Well, I think I'll leave you to your hundred most important books, Sergeant Pritchard. Yes. Well, I admit I shan't be sorry when I finish this one. Tough going. No, it isn't that, but uh, well, people give you such peculiar looks when they see you reading a book like this. Fanny Hill? Karl Marx. Detective Sergeant Pritchard. Yes, sir. Yes, he is. Yes, sir. Oh, no. I've got a date. He's got to work. So have I. Sheila's got some friends in. Sheila's friends all say actually all the time. They don't say bad form or good show, but they do say actually. Rather a lot. Somebody's been burning leaves. Don't you think it's the saddest thing in the world, actually, the smell of burning leaves? Actually, no. What do you think is the saddest thing in the world, actually? Hope. All those poor, simple clots who hope someone can help them. And they like Chosen McDavid? Oh, she listens, she comforts, and she forgives them. The great, understanding mother figure. And all the time she's working on their sense of guilt, making them face the truth, as she puts it. Yes, but the truth about what? Their own depravity, Ooh. their animal natures. You know, there are very damn few men who don't have some guilt about their animal natures. Or women, either. Oh, I don't. I don't think I do. <laughs> and the worse she makes them feel, the more dependent they become on her. Until she gradually cuts them off from their normal lives altogether. She separates them from their families, and then she separates them from their money. They're on a strictly voluntary basis. <laughs> yes, it is sad, isn't it? Well, it's sadder than the smell of burning leaves. She helped me. I, I felt better, easier, as though she'd lifted a great weight from me. What weight, Mr. Pitt? Well, I, I'd been worried about the business. Oh, we were making money, all right, but my father, his principles, uh, what he called his good name, was more important to him than all the money in the world. That was what he lived for, his good name and, and the chapel. He was a chapel goer, very strict. I mean, people like my father, they knew where they were, they knew what was right. Yes, indeed they did. It was awful when she wouldn't see me. Miss McDavid. Mm. That's why I went to Ruth Marl's flat. I did it, I'm guilty. You killed her. That's all I've got to say. Except that I feel easier now that I've made this confession, this statement. And I, I thank you for your consideration. There is just one point that you could help us clear up, Mr. Pitt. Of course. The weapon. You say that you struck Miss Mao with a walking stick. Uh, not that stick. I bought that one this morning. A similar one to this? Uh, I always carry a stick, Inspector. I have arthritis. What did you do with the stick with which you killed Miss Mao? Did you hide it somewhere? I must have forgotten it at her flat. Thank you, Mr. Pitt. We'll have your statement typed out, then you can read it. In the meantime, perhaps you'd like some coffee or something to eat? I usually have a glass of milk about this time. By all means. Will you look after, Mr. Pitt? Yes, sir. Thank you. You've forgotten your walking stick again, Mr. Pitt. Well, that is that. Not quite, I'm afraid, Sergeant. You mean you don't think he's guilty? Guilty? He wears his guilt like a second skin. But I don't think that he killed Miss Ruth Marl. The walking stick, the murder weapon. It wasn't in Miss Marl's apartment when the police arrived less than five minutes after she was killed. All right, he was lying about that. He did hide it somewhere. We'll find it. I didn't want Mr. Pitt to know this. But we have found it. Where? Some workmen found it in an empty flat. It was bloodstained, so they called the police. Where was the flat? South London, Thompson Street to be exact. And oddly enough, Sergeant, in an empty flat that Mr. Hosea Pitt was advertising for rent. You think someone planted it there? I think we were meant to find it there. It was barely concealed under a pile of rubbish in a cellar of a flat with Hosea Pitt's name all over it. Then why did he confess? To ease his mind. Take somebody else. Mrs. Pitt, perhaps. 
Mrs. Pitt went to Ruth Miles' place, and there was her husband's walking stick in the hall. That was the last straw. She picked it up and killed Ruth Miles with it. Then she planted it in one of her husband's empty flats. He's trying to protect her, and she's out to get rid of him. Oh, that's not very likely. Nice little woman like that. Are you married, Sergeant? I'm engaged. Ah. That's got nothing to do with it. I didn't think Mrs. Pitt was the kind, that's all. I thought she was rather pathetic. So it might be worth our while to set a trap for Mrs. Pitt. Well, that should be easy enough. Really? All we've got, all you've got to do is give her the good news. Tell her that we don't think Pitt's guilty, but we haven't found the stick yet. Proceed. Well, then you tell her that we've got to find the stick, because from something that Pitt told us, it could clear him and give us a lead to who really did. Go on. Well, then, if this Pitt killed Ruth Mark herself and planted the stick in the empty flat, she'll go back there to get it, to keep it out of our hands, won't she? Excellent, Sergeant. Just what I had in mind myself. Well, off you go. You, uh, you want me to speak to her? Well, I cannot think of a better envoy. You've already persuaded one young lady to entrust the whole of her future to you. You must have a way with women. Tonight. You may take a car. Our need to confess today is stronger than ever before. We have more to feel guilty about. <laughs> Another one. Sheila's got at least six young men in there already. Never going to get any sleep tonight. <laughs> oh, well, you know what I mean. Well, hmm. What happened about that flat you were seeing today? Another racket. Do you know they want two hundred pounds for the curtains? Mm -hmm. Come on, give us a sip, love. Yeah. <clears throat> mm. Hey, how's your liver today, Fred? Never mind about my liver. Come on, you give me back that can of beer. No, you give me back that can of beer. No. Uh, this is Fred Blaine. Yes, we, we've met. D now, Matt. don't be a fool. Why don't you come Matt, down wait. and have a drink? Look, I just... Matt, wait. I've got to go. I've got an appointment with someone who's even more of a bitch than you are, if that's possible. Now, come here. Now, listen. <laughs> <laughs> Have you noticed how young the policemen are looking this year? <laughs> Sergeant. Disobeyed my instructions. I spoke to Mrs. Pitt too. I gave them both the same story. About the stick. I told you I didn't think Mrs. Pitt was the kind. I bow to your superior knowledge of women. And I congratulate your fiancé. My fiancé? The young lady you're engaged to with such a perceptive understanding of feminine psychology, you're obviously bound for a very happy marriage. trying to call you. 
How long has that been going on? With Fred? Nothing's been going on. Well, what were you doing lying all over his bed? Well, he's got liver trouble. He's not supposed to drink. I, I look after him sometimes. He's one of my lame dogs, I suppose. I, I daughter him, that's all. Why didn't you tell me about it? I wasn't trying to hide anything. I wanted you to meet him sometime. I, I just didn't think you'd like him, that's all. You were right there, dead right. I can't understand it. She. I believed in her. Shows you. You can't be sure of anything these days. Everybody's out for themselves. Nobody has principles. Fleur, I've been thinking. You shouldn't have. There's been. an American. He's the head of a sect, the Exclusive Brethren. He's very strict. I've been thinking I ought to join them, Fleur. Do you want to see me? Do come in, Sergeant. This Ruth Mao case that we've been working on together. You mean you don't think she's guilty? Miss McDavid has been charged with murder. Well, that's that then, isn't it? Where are you going, Sergeant? Well, we're rather busy in the squadron this morning. Aren't One you? moment, Sergeant. I was going to say that I was quite impressed by your work on the Mao case. Thank you, sir. You may have heard that for some time now, I've been looking for a likely assistant. No. You haven't heard that, Sergeant? Well, happily now, it seems that my search is ended. This is where you hang your coat, and that will be your desk. There's a lot of work waiting to be done, Sergeant. Well, sit down. Right, carry on, Sergeant. 